Bobby Keith uh, Gymnasium getting set for the national anthem here this evening. And the national anthem uh, here this evening as the Cluckety High School JROTC, Mr. Frazier, uh, starts uh, making their uh, way back off the court here. Incredible yeah. job by the youngsters. That's uh, a great they, program for high school. It certainly is. It certainly is. Our own, of course, everyone still standing while the colors are escorted off by the JROTC group. And spectacular job. Good job, Bobby oh, Yorks. Yeah. We'll join uh, public address announcer of Plugety High School, Donnie Stevens, as her man Anthony is down there on the mic with him for the starting lineups tonight. Mr. Frazier getting set to oh. tip it off here. And you see the big, tall timbers of uh, North Laurel. And to Bailey Rice, they list him at 6'7". And I can tell you, hey. that kid is 6'7". Hey, big number 54 there. And uh, came out just a freshman, Earl. And, uh, you know, he looks like the old Mississippi State product that played for the Boston Celtics. Looks like Bailey Howell out there. One of the toughest of all time. 
under the glass. And we look for Bailey Ross to have a big one here this evening. And of course, Eastridge comes in off a big win last night, Earl. And Coach Randy McCoy trying to get his guys fired up. You see number 44 there. There's Austin Hilton. He'll be jumping center for the Warriors. And he's got the Mohawk. Looking he's got good. the Warrior look here. <laughs> fired up for high school basketball here, Earl. You got Bailey Rice and uh, Asher. Asher 6'6 six, six, and Rice 6'7. And Broughton is uh, the man jumping for the North Laurel Jaguars, as you mentioned. Against the Warrior, the tap, Mr. Frazier, will be controlled by the Jags. One thing they have been uh, kind of streaky with is three-point shooting. This North Laurel team, when they're on, they are on with a vengeance. Oh. Last night hit about 16 threes. Turnover opening play, and the Warriors will strike first. Trey Little. Well, you kind of wondered, Earl, what would be the mindset here for North Laurel coming into this game after the tough, tough district loss last night. Early on, Broughton with the basketball, free throw line, a shot a little short there, rebound, picked up by the Warriors, Mr. Cheney. Okay, some of these Warriors look like they've been in the white room, Earl, so that's <laughs> kind of team's trade turnovers here early. And about again, there's going to be a kid last night to open up the ball game with two quick threes, Kyle Jeffers for the Jaguars. Like Eastridge coming out, this man to man are going to be tough for them down low. Bailey misses it. Asher unable to get the board, but it's going to be pulled off by Mr. Cheney, Jacob Cheney. The running mate there, Little, up top of the key with the ball between the circles. Looks for Hep, turned over. Broughton's got it. Broughton down the lane, off the glass. It's up and good. In the first four games of North Laurel season, Broughton averaging almost 30 points. He's a dandy Earl. Able to get that off the turnover, take it all the way. Missed that one there. Looked as if they would try to slam it home. It didn't work out that way. We're tied at two. The Jaguars with the ball. Asher, free throw line, nails it. He's a kid that works a lot down on the block with his running mate Rice, but Asher's a kid that can step behind the arc and fire it up too. Well, they can work a good little high-low feed there on the post. And that's what happened last time. Another little high-low feed here by the Warriors just won't go down low for Sayers. Sweet play, though. Warriors get it back, and they score. Johnny Miller making the shot count for his Warriors. <laughs> Tell you, of course, a great golf name, Johnny Miller. And I started to say Miller with the two and not yeah, the four. Yeah. <laughs> Long bomb from the wing. We have to throw that analogy in sometimes. Okay, you got I'm it, Earl. <laughs> Brought in there, and that was a big three-point basket. As the young man has the skills, Earl, and you see defensively there putting the pressure on a basketball. Good a move. Nice sweet move by Little off the glass. It's up and good. Kind of holding uh, steady here, beginning uh, first quarter of play in the Bobby Keith uh, Classic, game one of two, a twin bill on a Saturday night, the old Saturday night special, yeah. if you will, on this TV and WYMT.com. Tana Hesterberg will sit uh, with you. The second game between the Clay County Tigers and Leslie County Eagles. That's still to come. Turnover now by the Jaguars. Jeffers loses it down the lane off the glass. Count the bucket by Johnny Miller and the old-fashioned three as he will go to the charity stride. Got to like the way these Warriors taking it to the hoop there as Miller gives them the lead with the basket. And he'll, as Earl mentioned, try to complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way here. In the beginning moments of this Bobby Keith Classic. And what a great name, great man. Tremendous mountain basketball. Shot is up and good. It makes... Makes it count, and now Eastridge goes back up to recapture the lead. Been up and down here in the early going tonight. That brought in a perfect two for two from the field. He's got five. But I believe Coach Sizemore wants to go right there. Rice snills that one there to tie it up at nine, just having a, a block freshman, party. Just a freshman, Earl. Asher only a sophomore. The other big kid for uh, North and only a sophomore, too for Broughton. Four minutes and 42 seconds remains in the opening quarter of play. We're tied at nine. It's the Bobby Keith Classic. 
First quarter of play, we're tied at nine between the Warriors of East Ridge and the Jaguars of North Laurel here at uh, Clay County High School. A turnover, and North Laurel will get the uh, ball back. Good little trap there immediately on the inbound, forces the turnover. I've got East Ridge with three turnovers, North Laurel with two here early. Sizemore checks in for the Jaguars. A little uh, jumper of the paint. Swish, a little sweet That's shot that time. Adam comes off the bench firing there, Earl. <laughs> it's a nice shot. A little down the lane, collides with uh, Bailey Rice, and they will get Rice with a foul, it appears. Yeah, the old charge block, Earl. Difficult there. I was thinking Rice was in pretty good position, but call goes the other way. Eastridge inbounds here. From the deep corner, they work it to Little. Little now will direct traffic across to the top of the key to the free throw line. Bounce pass, whistle blows. Some little uh, extracurricular activities, perhaps, as Mike Philpot makes the call. You know, I'm not sure there, Earl. It might have just been maybe a. Um, he must have received a cut. Bailey Rice there. You see him in the corner of your screen there. And. Uh, so it wasn't a foul, just simply uh, Old Bailey will have to go off there and kind of have the trainer take care of the cut. Blitzing down the baseline, pass off inside, shots off the glass by Jacob Chaney, and a good. Good Miller realization. The yeah, good realization there, Earl, because realizing that the big guy wasn't in there, so let's take a shot down low, and Chaney puts it home. Sizemore, the eighth grader. To the free throw line, shoots back of the iron, no good. Tap back up, no good. Riley puts it back up, no good. Taps back out and racing it down. It will be the Warriors all the way up and under. Shot is good of a Miller. <laughs> Foul underneath. Certainly can see Coach Sizemore. Wanted to get his guys fired up and get the ball down the court in a hurry. Trying to uh, get their flow. Shot is up by Broughton. It falls through. Well, I notice you got those nice little soft rims here at Clay County. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't just clang off there. Sort of laid pretty soft up on the iron. It's true definition of the shooter's role there, huh? <laughs> Second one, it's airborne good as well. 13 all the score. Now how about this full court pressure here, Earl? North trapping out of it. Eastridge looks. They finally get the ball in play. Down the lane, off the glass. Shot is up and good. Hilton against the bucket. Good assist there, Earl. Break the pressure and just keep going with it. That's what Coach Randy McCoy wanted his guys to do. They had the advantage, puts it home. Broughton all the way up and under. Down the baseline. It's up a good by Broughton. Makes it count. He's got nine now, Earl. Warriors with the basketball. Nine of the 15 that North has scored. Got a fast-paced game here, Earl, as we became kind of on pace to go in the 70s or 80s. Last night in the 60s for Clay and North. Long shot up and good. The Warriors nailing it there to go back up by three. Broughton with it. He fires a three, no good. Rebound of Eastridge, a foul going to be called. Matt Miller there hitting that long three for Eastridge. Warriors came up shooting a great percentage here, Earl, despite the fact they had some pretty tough uh, defense on them. You're right. Long one again. That's no good. Battling for it. Can they save it? Nope. It will come back over to the Jaguars of North Laurel. Khan also checks into the ball game for the Jaguars. Each coach going to the bench early and often here in the opening quarter of play. Yeah, just noticing Bailey Rice. He may have gotten hit in the mouth, Earl, and just not able to come back into the action here. Easter is taking advantage of it. Into Asher. 
Little turnaround hook. That one's left short. And the Warriors pulling off the rebound of Jacob Chaney. And Chaney, by no stretch of the imagination, is a little player, Jim. Oh, he is. kid with some size. Yeah, I got it. Caught on the pass off to Miller. Miller penetrates, kicks, steps, going to be called. And the ball comes back over to the Jaguars of North Laurel. And Rice will come back into the lineup for the Jaguars. Exciting time as high school basketball is in full swing now. Teams opening up play. Now brought in just a sophomore, Earl, and really fun to watch. Great moves. And looked like there they're going to get a foul, I believe, on East Ridge. Warriors up by three at the 1 to 20 mark of the opening quarter of play. Foul was against Jacob Childers. Number 32 there for East Ridge, his first. Got a tough assignment trying to track Peyton Broughton. Jeffers takes the pass back over to Sizemore now. Sizemore looks to the right side. Airborne with a three is Broughton. That one left short. Chaney again with the board for the Warriors to Khan. Khan into the front court. He spots the trifecta, circles off. Jeffers with a rebound coming opposite direction to Sizemore. In good the line. paint to Rice, no good, but Bailey Rice will be at the line for some free throws. Chaney coming over that time, wasn't going to give him the easy one. They're all going to force Rice to hit it from the line. Rice will get the line from two. East Ridge. Put up 82 points last night against Pearson. They're on the same kind of pace this evening. Front ends that one does the big freshman. He will have another one. See Coach Randy McCoy there in the background there from the coach in the Warriors. Coached University Heights to an All-A state championship. Also. Coach Pieville College to a trip to the Kansas City tournament. So he's been around. Had some good Elkhorn City teams, Jim, oh, back yeah. in the day. You got it, man. A guy by the name of Little Bull over there for a <laughs> couple of seasons. Very tough ball player. Todd Conley, he could play. East Ridge gets the bucket. 2016, a four pole Warrior lead. Rotten inside the paint, no good. Battling for it. Coming off with it will be the Warriors, and here they come. And Miller down the lane, off the glass. Should stop and go to by Miller. And the Warriors starting to open up a bit of a run. They now lead by six. Tell you, Johnny Miller playing a heck of a game. I've got him with nine here in this first quarter. Sizemore with the basketball. Puts it on the floor at the 10-second mark. They feed to Broughton down low on the block to Rice. Rice spins off the glass, no good. Battling for the board. The Austin Hilton's got it for the Warriors. And they're not even going to get a shot off as the clock expires. East Stretch leads the North Laurel Jaguars by six. We've got one completed at the Bobby Keith Classic. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to find out. Second quarter of play, getting ready to start here at Cluckety High School, Bobby Keith Gymnasium. Game one of two of the Bobby Keith uh, Classic uh, here tonight. The Warriors of East Ridge with a six-point cushion currently. And East Ridge will put the ball in play for quarter number two here tonight. Little with the basketball, feeds up top now. Sayers. Looks like Coach Sizemore getting some of his guys some rest here, Earl. And see Broughton coming out a tough game last night. You knew he had to get a blow on these guys at some point. We have Anthony down on the sidelines there with a the report. Anthony? Shot was up and good by the Warriors. 24-16. They stretch it up to eight. Feet back down on the block now. Big Rice, a spin move. Lays it in. Foul going to be called. <laughs> Tell you, Rice able to get that one. The trip prior. Austin Hill hits the first basket for East Ridge in this quarter. And wheels. The old fashioned three. And Bailey with four points in this game. Yeah. 
That one rolls off there. Rebound taken down by Jacob Cheney. Tell you, East Ridge done a good job on the glass, haven't they, Earl? I mean, they it's been one shot in it for North Laurel here. Aggressive defense. I'm going to guess that Coach Sizemore is going to go with this lineup for a couple of minutes, maybe to the TV timeout. Try to wear down the Warriors a little bit here, and they do get a turnover. North will have the ball back, trailing by six. Eastridge out rebounding in the early stages. And the Warriors got a couple of big uh, tall kids out there as well. Yeah. The battle between uh, Rice and Asher and Cheney and Hilton. Yeah, big Cheney's in there. Rice had position on him that time, but Hilton able to come through, pull it off. Little with it out on the wing, across the paint. Cheney picks it up, ball fake. Comes back up high now with it. Jacob Cheney with the basketball. Aggressive defense being played by North Laurel here. To Miller. Miller has been money here in the first half. Foul Ooh. is going to be called. And oh. so we got Johnny saying, look out here, Austin. Number 54, Rice. That's his second team kick. Got Miller with nine points in this first half. Miller with a bit line for two. Front ends that one. We'll have another one. East Ridge leads by six. Second one is up and it's good. East Ridge gets the seven point lead. Coach Sizemore comes back with Broughton. Foul going to be called underneath. They got the ball to Broughton. Looks as if Cody Sayers will be whistled for the harm down underneath. Yeah, that just didn't give Broughton an opportunity to come down that time. And number two, Sayers. Sayers two using strength. some of that upper body strength to sort of try to get Broughton off the block. Hayden Hodge comes in for the Jaguars. Number 14, he'll inbound the basketball. Back into Griebel. Griebel from the corner baseline. No good. Rebound is secured and nestled away by the Warriors. It's Laurel gone cold here, Earl. It's been a while since they've been able to come up with a basket. A near steal. They do have it. Griebel's got it. Fouled as he tried to split the defenders and get the ball back down the court into North Laurel territory. Whistle blows. Probably a pretty good foul by Johnny Miller that time, Earl. Just his first personal foul, but I believe North Laurel would have had a run out, had an easy basket. Eastridge sort of forcing them to shoot it a little bit further out than they'd want. Jeffers a long one, it falls short. Here come the Warriors. Cheney, shot is oh, up oh, and oh, good oh. by Jacob Cheney. A full timeout by the Jaguars of North Laurel. As they have fallen down by 10 now, 28 to 18. They just saw there, just in a hurry, East Ridge Warriors and Cheney, one of their big guys able to run the floor, Earl, gets the pass and puts it home. And East Ridge with a big 10 point lead. They led it by six at the end of 122 16. And Bailey Rice's basket under the bucket. That's been it for the Jaguars here. Cold shooting here in the second quarter in particular. As you mentioned by the Jaguars at Eastridge come out tonight. Randy McCoy's ball club hitting a lot of shots in the first half of play. So with 5.57 to go in it. Game one of two, of course, coming up next to Leslie County Eagles and the Cluckety Tigers will square off against each other. You know, it's going to be a good one, Earl. Of course, you talked about that game last night. Clay County comes away with the big win. You know, the 49th uh, District Gym up until just uh, a couple of years back finally started seeding. They had the blind draw. Uh -huh. It was one of the last districts that had that, but now 
with the seating, of course, Clay Kenny must make a trip to London to take on the Jaguars in February. That is not an easy place to play. North has got a great uh, home record. Well, I tell you what, you talked about the fans. They loved it here last night. I'm guessing that those guys were here last evening as well. <laughs> Near packed house at Clark County High School, and it holds 3,800, and I would dare say probably about 3,100 in attendance last night, Jim. The Jaguars got it, trying to look for something, doing a good job on Broughton defensively. The Warriors of East Ridge, he takes it down under. Blocked in there. Long rebound picked up by Jeffers. Along with up, no good. Rebound this time by Cheney. Or make that Austin Hilton. Hilton was falling down, and the foul is going to be called. Five thirty-three, twenty-eight, eighteen. A near steal. The deflection by the Jaguars of uh, North Laurel. Hayden Hodge on the deflection that time. Eastridge will maintain side court out near their bench. They toss in to uh, Michael Kahn. And North Laurel trying to turn this thing around with defensive man-to-man -man pressure. They've turned Eastridge over a few times, but Warriors, yeah, it looks like there's another turnover there, Earl. I've got them with five in the game. Ball on the end line. Matt Miller will come back in for the Warriors. Putting the ball in play, the Jaguars of North Laurel. North Laurel's going to bar some of that Clay County double stack offense. Broughton down the lane, fouled, and Peyton Broughton will go to the free throw line. I think Coach Sizemore just telling his guys, we're going to have to get it in the hands of number three here, <laughs> let him create, see what he can do. And I always feel like this young man has the advantage, just a sophomore. Had nine points early in that first quarter. Shot is up no good. He is an incredible basketball player. And you mentioned the fact just a sophomore. There's a, seems like when you and I get together all the broadcasts, we have freshmen and sophomore, <laughs> yeah. no matter what the sport, that really <laughs> excel in it. I got you, Earl. Second one is good by Broughton. It's full court pressure. Eastridge hadn't turned it over a number of times, but difficult pressure here to beat. Khan gets it across. Into the hands of Matt Miller. Ball's knocked loose. Miller goes back and gets it. Good on look. the wing, and Mr. Miller. Johnny, no good. Rebound off to the Jaguars. Hodge gets the board. Still a good look at Tam Earl. Got the good set. Broughton and one. Just 12 points. Cuts it to seven and potentially six if he can connect on the old-fashioned three. He's really carried the scoring load. Rice with four. Sizemore, Rice and Asher with two each. And he makes hay while the sun is shining. A 4.37 left here in the first half of play. Eastridge leads the Jaguars of North Laurel. 28-22. It's the Bobby Keith Classic. Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week on this TV at WYMT.com. 28-22. Eastridge with the basketball and uh, the lead. The Warriors with it. North, that pressure. Brock is going to get to turnover. Peyton Broughton down the lane, shots up no good, rebound picked up by the Warriors and big Austin Hilton. <laughs> Tell you, big Jacob Cheney sort of holds the ground, then collapses as Broughton runs into him, but this pressure that the Jags are bringing is going to be a difference maker. Hodge on the seal that time. Hodges gets uh, the shot up and good. It's his first bucket of the game and little 6-0 run here by the Jaguars.
just aggressive overplay defense. You're going to have to have some guys cut back door here, Earl. Foul will be called. That will be the seventh on uh, North Laurel. Eastridge has committed eight here in the first half of play. A lot of exciting uh, action in basketball, of course, uh, upcoming tonight, sports overtime. Saturday night, we'll yeah. have all the highlights of uh, several high school games and uh, local college and major college uh, games today. Of course, the Kentucky Wildcats, big winner. So the Tar Heels of North Carolina, the 14. And Alex Porthris, of course, going down with the torn ACL, going to be out for the season. Mm. Free throw no good, and Rice, the big fella back in for the Jaguars, gets to rebound. The yeah. Army-Navy game. Hey, Army-Navy, I got you, babe, as good as it gets. And right now for North Laurel, going to have to get some guys involved in the offense. And Hodges gets his second bucket of the night. A late old run here by the Jaguars defensively. That's what's turned the tide here. Little floater that might have been partially blocked by Rice and Riley with the board. Foul will be called as Riley and Austin Hilton went up for the rebound. They will get that on Austin Hilton of Eastridge. North Laurel with a chance to tie it here. North Laurel getting that chance to go to the foul line. Eastridge had gotten out to a 28 18 lead. North Laurel now defensively getting back in this one. Hagan Hodges with a couple of big baskets taking it to the hoop, and they're back in this thing. Jathus Riley, first one, rolls in there. Earns a second one. The kind, friendly rims. There you go. A Bobby Keith Gymnasium. Have them a little salt. <laughs> second one up. Nope, pops off there. Rebound taken down by Jacob Cheney. Cheney with the basketball up to Johnny Miller. Back to Cheney. Little running at teardrop of the paint. No good. Asher with the board for the Jaguars. And North, an opportunity to take their uh, first lead in a long time here in the first half. Try that double stack maneuver on the low post here. And get it to the low post. Knocked loose very quick. The hands of Little. Off the glass, no good, but Cody Sayers is going to be fouled, and he will go to the free throw line for the Warriors. Hey, Cody takes it to the hoop there. Our cameraman, Freddie Hunt, deftly moves out of the way there, Earl. Team one, I saw him, uh, the staff playing here, uh, <laughs> after he got hooked up some pickup games. Still got some moves. You better believe it. Shot is up and good. Cody Sayers' first points. East Ridge had gone quiet for a while, Earl. Second one is no good. Rebound picked up by Hodges. Hodges has been a spark for the Jaguars since he came into the oh, ball absolutely. game. And nice uh, shots and a couple of uh, steals and an assist or two as Asher takes the ball at the free throw. Line. Looking underneath to his block party partner <laughs> Mr. Rice now they'll feed back on the post spin move good short job. good job by Cheney there Earl he battled Rice down low Miller across the paint dishes shots no good but a foul will be called they will get that one on Rice and back up to his feet will be Austin Hilton well, Austin Got four points in the game. Takes it to the basket there. Draws the foul. Has the haircut for the ball game. There you go. Circles off the Mohawk look. I like it. Well, if you're a warrior, you've got you to come, uh, you know, with that uh, type of moxie, type of setup. Hilton looking for his fifth point. Eastridge led it by six at the end of the first quarter, 22-16. Pushes their lead up now to three here. Pace of the game sort of slowing offensively here, Earl, as the defenses assert themselves. Three-point lead for the Warriors. North Good with cut. it. Nice shot off the glass up and good by Broaden. 
Good little give and go there, Earl. Asher, good look from the high post. And now North applying the pressure. Push will be called on the Jaguars. First foul on Broughton there, Earl, and officials calling it a little close. Broughton basically had Sayers kind of trapped back there at the half court line. Rolls that one in. Cody Sayers, he will have another one. Puts Eastridge back up by two. Second one is good too. Good rotation on that foul shot. 32-29. Back up chop, long bomb by Asher. Count it. Oh. And we are tied at 32. Bryson's fifth point. Rebound picked up by Asher. To Sizemore. Sizemore lost the handle, stumbled a bit, regains his composure. Takes it across the paint. Little runner and something good. Gotta like the way Eastridge is beating this pressure, but they kind of have to keep pushing it, Earl. See the turnover caused there. If you allow the defense to get set again, then you have a difficult opportunity. Have Eastridge with seven turnovers in this first half. North Laurel with four, unofficially, I might add. Try to get the ball over to Little. Asher takes it at the free throw line. Now he loses it, and here come the Warriors. Johnny Miller, shot is up, no good, but a foul will be called on uh, Sizemore of North Laurel and Johnny Miller back to the free throw line. 58 seconds remains in the half. Miller the leading scorer for East Ridge with 10 points. Bryson Asher had had a number of good trips up and down the court here, Earl, both offensively and defensively. And that time Miller sticks his hands in there, makes the steal and gets rewarded for taking it to the basket, getting two foul shots. He can tie the game here on this one if Miller is successful. Shot is good. He makes the connection. And we are tied at 34. Sizemore crosses midcourt, walks into the front court. Right side back over to Broaden. Broaden trying to make his move. Good defense here by the Warriors. Got to believe they want to get brought in a good shot here. That one rims in and rims out and pulling off the board. The Warriors little out on the run over to Miller. Miller fires it. No good. Uh -oh. Rebound picked up by Cheney. Cheney goes back up strong. No good. Loose ball this time. The Jaguars come out with it. Sizemore and down to 18 seconds before the half. Oh, and they get Miller with his second personal foul there, way away from the basket. Double bonus. Coach McCoy, I believe, will send Sayers in for Miller there. Two-shot opportunity here for Adam Sizemore. He has four points in the game. Shot is up and good. First lead North Laurel's had in a while, Earl. And a chance to push it back up to two, and Eastridge will have the opportunity if they so choose, if the shot is good, to have the final uh -huh. shot of the half. Yep. Full court pressure here by the Jags. Good idea by Coach Sizemore. Nobody's in foul trouble. Why not try to come up with the hassle play? 
Little splits to the fenders. Little down the lane. Little off the glass. Count the bucket, and he's going to be fouled. A nice drive by Little. <laughs> Tell you, Trey, these guys from East Ridge, Coach McCoy's had these guys hitting the whites, Earl. They've got the upper body strength. That time, Trey Little, for the second time in the game, takes it to the hoop, and with that upper body strength, able to convert. Looking for his seventh point here. Trying to give his team the lead in this first half. He does so. 37 to 36 with seven seconds. Sizemore all the way up and under off the glass. No good. Put back. No good. And will that count? Yeah. Hodges will get the put back. It will be good. 38 37 as we go to the locker room. The Bobby Keith Classic on this TV. Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week and WYMT.com. Coach Brad Sizemore, your team's up 38 to 37 at halftime. You were down 28 to 18 earlier. What got your team back in this game? Uh, we just started playing a little bit. I mean, we had an awful first quarter, just came out really flat. I know the guys are fatigued on a heartbreaking loss over here last night, but, you know, we finally responded in the second quarter and got in the press, and, and hopefully we're going to be able to do that in the third and fourth quarters. We're playing a really good East Ridge team. We gave up too many open threes and offensive rebounds, but uh, hopefully our kids will respond and play the way they can in the second half. If there's one area you want to see your team improve on for this second half, what would that be? Just defensive ball pressure. I mean, if we, if we can get pressure on the ball, we're going to be able to get some steals and get some transition layups. So. Coach, thank you. Earl and Jim. Thank you very much, Mr. Anthony, as we get set to start the uh, third quarter play. And Brad Sizemore there, the North Laurel Jaguar coach, and longtime assistant with uh, Steve Wright at South Laurel. Yeah. His first coaching job was down at Garrett County and came back home when the opportunity presented itself to Laurel County. The coach sees Jaguars of North Laurel a couple of years ago. We talked about. The stops Randy McCoy, one of the legends in the mountains, has made in his uh, coaching uh, carousel and yep. had a chance to get a state championship all A. Yeah. University Heights Academy. And we uh, sort of, Randy and I go back a long, long ways and uh, always talk about the dapperly dress. There you go. Randy McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> And the Jaguars will have the basketball to begin the third quarter of action. Thought they got some good feeds on the high and low post, but here's a quick turnover, Earl. Little down the lane off the glass. Trey Little makes it count. And he picks up where he left off, Earl. Made some big plays in the latter part of that second quarter, and now the young man gives his team the lead back again at 39-38. North will fire a long one. That's Asher just a two as that big foot was on the line. East Ridge, they're going to turn it over, I do believe. Got to believe the North Laurel folks like their youth of their ball club here. Just saw Asher step out the sophomore and hit the big shot there. Of course, they've got the size with he and Bailey Rice, just a freshman on the inside. And then, of course, number three, Broughton, is just a sophomore seemingly everywhere, offensively and defensively. They feed on the block now to Rice. He loses it. Eastridge will pick it up again. And here come the Warriors down in a hurry to Johnny Miller. Back to Little. Bouncing back along the right side beyond the arc to Johnny Miller. Little takes it, feeds back to Miller. He turns on the afterburners. Down inside, lost a handle on it, coming back over to the Jaguars. Tough defense, tried to get it up in the trees that time, Earl, and draw the foul. And Mike Philpott would have none of it. Couple of turnovers here by both teams to start this third quarter. We know that's not what coaches Sizemore and McCoy wanted to see here. Asher, spin, little leaner, hits up and good by the big fella. That kid can play, Earl. He's got a lot of skills, good hands, I think, and you can't really coach that. Collision foul will be called. They will get that one on Rice. And outside of your screen here, Earl, we see, well, there you see it, Austin Hilton goes down. He spent some time on the floor. As he's a warrior, Earl. He's a warrior. Very tough kid. That's the first foul by either team here the second half.
Little. Splits the defenders. It's loose. Little done a great <laughs> job oh, saving man. it, didn't he? Down the lane. Shots up no good by Cody Sayers. Rebound by the Jaguars. Say it. North Laurel would do good, I think, to find 44. Asher, he wants it there on the high post. Broughton, good guy to feed, Earl, because you can't slough off on him. Bounces back to Asher. Asher pulls back into the baseline quarter now. Passes off. Foul will be called. Out on the floor on the Warriors. Their first foul here. And I believe that was going to go against quarter. Hilton. He was just trying to get around the side of Asher to deny the entry feed and couldn't quite get around Bryson at that time. Quick timeout, we'll keep it here. Just a 30. Eastbridge led it by six at the end of one, 22-16. North Laurel led by one at the half, 38-37. And now with this nice little run here, we have the three-point advantage for North Laurel. Is it? Leslie County and Clay County sat to do battle. Should be a good one in the in the night cap, Earl. Talked about that tough, tough one-point win for Clay County, and they've got some guys with the flu bug, as we understand, so always tough, you know, to play back-to-back -back nights when your team maybe isn't feeling well this type of year. A couple of the other injuries as well. I think that's something to be expected along the high school right now, isn't it? Yeah. All schools, as far as that goes, you know, those little viruses hit and kind of explode. Strangely enough, in the NHL, they've had a round of the mumps that's been going around the teams. Asher, spin move there. Could you imagine that? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you look at the, the toughness of the National <laughs> Hockey League. I know. And your goalie with one tooth <laughs> can't play, not yeah. because he doesn't have the teeth or he's got a broken <laughs> kneecap. It's because of the mumps. It's the mumps. Or, or the goon you bring in off the bench. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. East Ridge, no mumps for the Warriors. Big shot is up and good by Miller. Just a two, but he makes it count. East Ridge Warriors now trying to play some catch up here at the five minute mark. And now Asher's been the guy for North Law. Good look there, good feed. Long one from top of the key, no good. And we have hands on the basketball tie up. It will be Warrior basketball. Four fifty-one remaining in the third quarter of play. The North Laurel Jaguars lead the East Ridge Warriors 44-41, the Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week. 44-41, East Ridge inbounding the basketball, deflected out of bounds by Kyle Jeffers. The Warriors will put it back in play. Coach Sizemore said he wanted his guys with the ball pressure up front, and you see there... Jeffers won't let him get the ball in bounds. He keeps hustling over and knocks it away. They do get it in now, a little up to Khan, who comes in. Khan, the little floater, no good. Battling for the board, off and running comes Greville for the Jaguars. Up to Broughton. Broughton takes it, a little good on look. him, feeds into Riley off the glass. It's up and good. Beautiful pass by Broughton. You know, he had the big scoring first half, Earl, but he's being a distributor here and gets the teammates involved. Long one from the quarter, falls short. Jacks save it. No, they can't. Remains Warrior basketball. Loose ball, Khan, nice little save to Miller. Miller collides, shots up no good, but will be at the free throw line. Got Johnny with 14 points in the game. He and Trey Little have the only points for East Ridge in this second half. 
We were on a real quick pace early in this game. Earl looked like we were going to have a game in the 70s or 80s, but it's certainly slowed down quite a bit here. Let's take a look here as you see Miller take it to the hoop and draws the foul to Deskins Motors. Instant replay. You're approved. You are approved, my man. Broaden with the basketball. Down inside to Riley. It's up off the glass. Good again. They had that play. Yeah. Twice now in the third quarter. And a steal by Broughton went up for the slam. No good. Riley, the put back, no good. Rebound this time by Matt Miller. And Matt will be fouled by the Jaguars. That will be their third team foul. Broughton came away with the steal and decided to go for the dunk. Really couldn't get his seat, feet set. Johnny Miller free throw line. Yes, indeed. Broughton takes it. Back up high to Sizemore. I believe the scoreboard is wrong here, Earl. They've given the points, those last points. Yep, the East Ridge. So it should be 48-46. That's what I'm thinking, Earl. I don't quite totally have it. Coach McCoy is on that. They'll get that at the dead ball. They'll have to take a few moments to clear that out. But there was a basket for Eastridge that was credited to North Laurel. Shot by North, no good. About Broughton puts it back in. So. Shot is up, no good. Bounced around north with a rebound. Broughton out near midcourt to Sizemore. Aggressive man-to-man -man defense being played here by the Warriors. Good look. Asher to Broughton. It's oh, up and good. Talked about those nice hands that Asher has there. And that time he was able to get the ball and dish it off down low for the big bucket. And timeout being called. I believe it's an official timeout here now as they'll make the adjustments, I do believe. North Laurel does lead. Let's see here, Earl, if I can come up with it. Two nineteen remaining in the third quarter of play. And my count, it is forty six. Should be fifty two forty six. Scoreboard has fifty four forty six. And guess that's the way they'll keep it. They were tabulating there a moment ago. The official scores keeper. For East Ridge. Uh huh. East Ridge with the basketball. Riley's got it for North. Shot is up and good. That ball pressure that Coach Sizemore talked about, he's getting it, and his team creating those turnovers to get him back with a big lead in this game. Cheney to Con. Back over to Jacob Cheney, into the quarter to Miller. Miller stops, pops, it's up, it's no good. Rebound, put back in off the glass and good by Matt Miller. What a 44 remains in a third quarter of play. Here come the Jaguars, and Broughton will be fouled. Fifty six forty eight one thirty five remaining third quarter of play. That's his second. Nobody really in foul trouble in this game or despite the fact that we've had some aggressive defense being played by both teams primarily man to man the entire way. And in most measure full court pressure. Both these teams playing a lot of guys which both teams played last night. And to uh, Broughton, tried the alley-oop, didn't work, but Peyton Broughton gets his rebound and puts it back up and good. Got him with 21 unofficially, Earl. 
A busted play, and it's on the end line, and North. Sizemore was trying to toss the ball back in off of uh, Eastridge, but the Warriors will keep it. Had the break there. Good little play designed by Miller, but couldn't make it happen. North will get the ball back. Oh, look at this. These guys have played aggressive defense, hustling on every play. Spin move by Broughton. Feeds back up to Sizemore. Jeffers now. And Asher, a little fadeaway. It's up and good. The 13 in the game, eight points in this third quarter. And young man has been the difference, I think, here early in the second half. Certainly has. Miller fires the three. This one off, no good. A battling for Cheney's got it, puts it back up, no good. But going to the line will be Jacob Cheney for the Warriors, whom trail by 12 now. Cheney's been invaluable down on the inside there with the big body banging against Asher and Rice. Have him with five points in the game. Hit a three pointer in that second quarter. Got a nice touch. That's what rolls off. See Brad Sizemore there taking charge Earl. You talked about the tough game last night. And they came out a little flat, but have their game back together now. Second one is up and good by Chaney. Eleven a point lead. North, will they go back to the old stack here? Yes, indeed. <laughs> nope, they come out of it now. Picks it up by Asher, shots up by Broughton. No good. I thought they would work uh -huh. the old high low. Yeah. Well, you saw that many times with Bobby Keith, didn't you? One of the patented things that he done uh, lots of times. I tell you, indefensible, really, you know. And Sizemore has done that a lot with his North Arl Jaguar teams, too, and it's really been effective for them as well. Uh -huh. Of course, the big key, can you have a ball handler that can create? And certainly Broughton has done that effectively here this evening. Broughton, eyes up for the second one here. Unofficially with 22 if he hits that, 21. Cheney a big rebound, knocked oh. loose, picked back up by Miller. Johnny Miller down the lane, feeds over to Matt Miller. Shot is up and good. The Miller boys, Miller time. Johnny pushes it to Matt for the easy two. Now down to nine seconds as Sizemore walks it across midcourt, gets it to Asher, puts it on the floor, slap loose by Miller. Miller fires it up at the buzzer, rolls off there. Had the distance, wouldn't stay in. After three, it's North Laurel 60, East Ridge at 51. Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week on this TV at WYMT.com. As we come back, our man Anthony down along the sidelines. Earl and Jim in that last time out, Brad Sizemore said he wants this team to keep the tempo up and to not lose it, don't lose this lead, hang on to it, play smart, protect the ball. And then Coach McCoy for the East Ridge Warriors was saying, make better shots, don't turn the ball over, protect the ball, and let's try to get back in this game. Earl and Jim. Thank you, Mr. Anthony. Great job and foul call. The Peyton brought down the line on the opening play of the fourth quarter here. Yeah, you know, Earl, we did some retabulation. I'm not sure. I've got North Laurel with two less points, but unofficially. Broughton gets the first free throw there to fall. Kind of thought they'd take a look at that for after that. Evidently, it's, it's okay. That's why you bring your official score with you. There you go. Second one is up and good about Broughton. And Eastridge is going to throw it away, and North Laurel will get the ball back. Uh, Coach Sizemore, you know, Anthony's report there was right on. When he talked with Coach Sizemore, he said, hey, we're going to put some ball pressure on here. We came out flat in that first half, and with this pressure defensively, they've been able to regain form and push this lead up to double digits here. Problem with it. 
Passing it around the horn and North. Looked as if they're just taking their time here. And Asher fires along with it's up and good. Just <laughs> exhausting some of the clock. A near steal as the Jaguars put the pressure on. Matt Miller gets the ball over to Johnny Miller. Johnny Miller down the lane. The leaner lost it. Matt Miller picks it up. He lost it, but picked back up and rolls off on Hilton. Out of bounds and will stay with Eastridge. Hilton trying to put it home there, Earl. Just a crier wouldn't drop. It's defensive pressure by North Laurel has made the difference, both man to man, this time in the zone on the inbounds. A little fade away by Little from the free throw line, no good. Battling for the board, and Asher will come off with it to Sizemore. Sizemore down the lane to the hole, off the glass, it's oh, up oh, and good, and a foul is going to be called. Sizemore will have his chance at the three point play. Just an eighth grader. Look at this move by the eighth grader as he puts it on the board for two more. The Deskins uh, Motors instant replay. Where Earl? I'm approved. Yeah, you are approved in the eighth grader there. You got to approve these young players for Coach Sizemore, the North Laurel Jaguars. Sizemore looking for his ninth point. That would have fallen Ooh. short. Man, Earl. I think that's going to go on Hilton, and they're going to get him with a little bit of an elbow there, and that will be another turnover. Fourth personal foul on Hilton. Inadvertent. Spirit of the battle. Yep. Jeffers to Sizemore. Back over to Broaden. Jeffers fires a long three. It's no good. A rebound into the hands of Jacob Cheney. Cheney over to Miller. Back to Kahn now. Kahn the spin move. Kicks over to Miller. Fires a three. Off the mark. No good. Battling for the board. And Sizemore off and running. <laughs> Tell you, the eighth grader brings it down. He never once looked down at the basketball, Earl. Takes it hard at the hole. And Fine young players. Sizemore won a time out there, so his eighth grader in a little bit of trouble. But big second half here. It's a one point game at halftime, and big second half by North Laurel. You see Coach Randy McCoy there instructing his guys. They fought it pretty hard here, Earl. I think just sometimes you get on the road and they're talking now, you see. Austin Hilton and Randy there going over some things, talking about where the fourth personal foul occurred there with the elbow as it sort of ran into Jathus Riley there on the, on the offensive rebound. But North Laurel with the 16 point lead and Earl Owens, some of the fans coming in here and getting ready for Clay County basketball. Randy McCoy still teaching there. Yep. Still going over things with his guys. It's what it takes. Oh, yeah. Certainly outstanding effort by Bryson Asher. Have him with 16 in the game, 11 in this second half, and Earl. He scored like the first six points for North Laurel in this second half and made some big, big plays. See him on that high post. He's very comfortable on the high post. Asher with a shot, falls short, rebound off to Eastridge, and here come the Warriors. Miller down the lane, off the glass, no good. Foul is going to be called, though, and Miller will be at the free throw line. Eastridge came into this game three wins against one loss. Only loss was on the road this the only road game they played this year against Sheldon Clark. They went down in that one 64 45. Miller shot is up and good. Not a 
officially have Johnny with 20 points. Of course, Earl, you talked about North Laurel coming into this one in two wins, three defeats. They played a tough schedule getting down against Danville and some other squads. Clay County here in a tough district game. You're early, just a couple of weeks into the season. Broughton Racing. Oh, yeah. Nice pass inside. Asher is going to be fouled. It will be back to the free throw line. Now, had Asher been able to convert that one, that would have been a UPAC top play contender as Broughton takes it down to the right side behind the back. Asher can't convert. He'll go to the line for two. Full timeout. East going to take a timeout here, or we'll keep it here. 67-53 uh, and a hard-fought ball game here tonight. Eastridge in the first half in particular led by as many as nine at one point, Jim, and had uh, a lot of the momentum going their way. And you heard Coach Brad Sizemore come out when he was talking with Anthony there earlier and said he had to get some turnovers to kind of open up their transition game, and yeah. that happened. Yeah, it certainly did happen. And we talked about that North Laurel Jaguar schedule. They started the season on the road at Rockcastle County. They win that one 76-63. Then they play Apollo, lose that one by three. Lafayette, tough, tough loser, 80-55. They beat Madison Southern by four. And then last night, Clay County victorious in both boys and girls. Great, great games here, big crowd at the Bobby Keith Gymnasium last evening for big district action here in the 49th district. And you know we play tonight and it won't be long at all. We'll have the Mountain Classic. Yeah. Coming up. Coming our way. Hard to Just imagine. Just a few weeks. Yes, it is. How fast time goes. Assert that. Asher's shot is up and good. We'll have the second one here. Just a sophomore. And got the skills. He has the skills. North Raw kind of coming with a little bit of a zone press on the full corridor. I believe that's pretty much of a token deal. Eastridge, Coach uh, McCoy getting some uh, fresh bodies now as well. Miller remains out there. And North Raw playing his zone defense, trying to force some outside shots here. Long one is up, it circles off. Rebound to Broughton. Broughton with the basketball good up. Look. Yep, the big Rice at Rice the leader. It's no good. Battling Fort sells out of bounds, remains on the Jaguars' end. Love the way these North Laurel guards bring the ball up the court, looking to make a play, looking to make a pass, Earl. And Broughton got it to Rice, just a crier that wouldn't drop for him. Broughton down inside, back of the plate, pops off, rebound uh, to the Warriors. Still in the way by Broughton, and he's going to be on the end line, so he comes back over to East Ridge. <laughs> we will take the time out and come back with uh, more. It's the... Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week, Bobby Keith Classic on this TV and WYMT.com. Play is set to resume as Eastridge has the basketball. They will inbound it. A little of the ball. Hey, North Laurel plays an aggressive defense, don't they? I mean, I guess last night you saw that, Earl, with the Tigers and the Jags battling. But... Defensively, that's what's turned this game around in this second half for North Laurel. Broughton down the lane, shots up, no good foul going to be called. And Red makes a nice play that time, Earl. Got him unofficially with 23 points this evening. Talk about the young man averaging. You can see why he averages 30 points a game, and he does it without shooting a whole lot. Shot is up and it rolls in there for Broughton. We'll have another one. And we mentioned once again the kind rims. 
of the Bobby Keith Gymnasium. This game was closer than 17 points, Earl. Yes. Eastridge had a six-point lead at the end of the first quarter, and then North Laurel held a one-point advantage at halftime. But second half, defensively, Coach Sizemore and his guys have turned this thing around. Little will be fouled by Hodges. That will be the sixth team foul on uh, North Laurel, so not as of yet. Uh, you have the shot of uh, Coach Keith, I think, and longtime assistant Larry Sizemore sitting next to him. <laughs> Some things never change. No. Spin move by Little, lost it. Broughton is going to pick it up, up the court to Hodges. Hodges off the glass, no good. Put back by Broughton, no good. Gets the rebound, follows the shot, no good. And Broughton, at first you don't succeed. Try and try again, and gets it to fall. Blocked from behind, but it goes in. <laughs> Tell you what, a hustling play by Johnny Miller that time early. Expected the whistle to come in. Kind of got a grin on his face as he comes down, but gets the bucket. Asher from the free throw line, no. Battling for it. Rebound picked up by the Warriors, and a foul will be called as Jacob Cheney had the board for his uh, Eastridge team. Okay, of course, we've talked about the matchup last evening in the 49th district. Of course, East Ridge in the 59th district to the 15th region, Pike County School. And they'll be making some waves. Santa's Elves make the show. There you go. It's that time of year. It is indeed. I wonder if they left our present over there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe under the bleachers. You know, I think we actually tree. have a present behind us here, Earl. So yeah. let's, you know, that's not it too hard. Yes, we do. Yeah. We thank the folks for our present. Shot is up and good. Like the way Cheney plays ball here early. Will be a big guy that has a nice touch that Coach McCoy will be pretty reliant on throughout the rest of this season. Senior. Size more comes to Asher near steel. Asher lost it, picks it back up, and going to get him with the travel there. I'm not sure, but it will be the turnover. Yep. Shuffling the feet. Just 319 left here. North up by 15. East Ridge with the basketball. Uh, but Earl, I tell you, you know, you talk about the Bobby Keith Classic and just what a great job Bobby Keith and the guys from Clay County have done and how they incorporated so many guys from the mountains. Let us cheer for them, too. Foul's going to be called on Little. You know, that's one thing about us mountain folks, no matter uh -huh. if it's in Pike County or <laughs> All the way. If one of our teams is in anything, we all bend it. together. You got it. We, we all are bend it. together. That's one of the great, great things, you know. A couple of uh, state football uh, championships for our mountain schools. Absolutely, Earl. Belfry Pirates get it done. And Coach Philip Haywood with another state championship. And then. Pulaski County gets it done with John Hines and the guys. Mm -hmm. You know, if a football could talk, it would talk like John Hines. I'm you know what I'm you. saying, Earl? And the information it would detail. <laughs> Sizemore crosses midcourt. Back over to Broughton. Broughton with the ball. Free throw line. Picks up his dribble. Back into Asher. Asher scoots back now. Certainly, Coach Sizemore played a lot of guys here this evening. These guys primarily the starters, but he had them on the bench for a while yeah. there in that first half because didn't come out with the fire that he wanted, but they have since stoked that fire and played really well here. As you see, Adam Sizemore, just an eighth grader, outstanding ball handler. And North just winding some of the clock down now. Back over to Broughton. Comes back to Sizemore. Clock rolling at uh, 2.02. 2 
Sort of working a little bit of that double stack delay that Bobby Keith was able to come up with. And you see Hilton come across there with his fifth personal foul. He'll be gone, Earl. That'll be it for him as he made the block on uh, Peyton. And we've got some football action that some folks might be wanting to watch tomorrow, professional football. Your Bengals take on my man Johnny Football and the Browns tomorrow. Gets his first start. <laughs> A couple of Texas boys playing yeah. quarterback. Man. Cincinnati might have shot themselves at a foot last weekend against Pittsburgh. Yeah. You have a halftime lead and into the third quarter and the fourth quarter comes and you kind of implode. Yeah. Dalton's free throw is up and good. We'll see. They've got Cleveland uh, this Sunday in Cleveland. Then you've got sure. the Denver Broncos and you're at Pittsburgh Steelers to yeah. end the regular season. It's tough. Season, it's so. a tough ride. It's a tough ride. The loss, the first loss to Cleveland and the tie they had might come back to haunt them. It's going to be an excellent finish. Shot is up no good this time. Jacob Cheney with the board. Sizemore probably going to have his guys take a few extra foul shots <laughs> in practice next week. That might be one of the things that they haven't done as well as he might like. Eastridge with the basketball, and Shady will take along with no good. Valley Ford, loose ball picked up by the Warriors, but a foul is going to be called with 128 to go in the contest. Tenor Hesterberg will join our Jim Frazier for the second ball game uh, tonight between the Clickney Tigers and the Leslie County Eagles here at the Bobby Keith uh, Classic. To you, Leslie County. This is, I believe, their seventh straight road game that they played this year. And I think they'll have like a 10 game homestand after this one. Yeah, so I was getting ready to say maybe on into 2015, they <laughs> can know, relax a little bit at home. Man, but we anticipate a great Clay Leslie matchup in the nightcap here. And of course, the legend himself, Bobby Keith, will be at midcourt to give the trophies out. We'll hope to have an interview with him at halftime of the second game. Tanner Hesterberg and he will talk about basketball, talk about hoops, and life in the mountains. North with a basketball. It's been a good ball game, Earl. It's been a real good one. See some individual skills. Just the, the youth of North Laurel means they're going to be a force for a number of years. Yes. In Absolutely. this 13th region. You're right about that. Asher free throw line dumps into uh, Rice. Dribble out of bounds as we have uh, went under a minute to play. Big Bailey had a good first half. Hasn't really gotten untracked in the second half, but his mate... Bryson Asher has. Shot is off, no good. Rebound, put back up and good. It's grabbled. Kid had some big shots last night. Con down inside. The shot is off the glass, up and good for the Warriors. Lucas Freeman with the basket there. And here we go down the stretch run into Rice. North, Sizemore takes it back out to the top. Jaguars will even their record up at three. East Ridge will drop to three and two. Been a good one in the opener of the Bobby Keith Classic. And we will try to get Anthony Bersaglia here with Brad Sizemore. Let's see. The officials, Mike Philpott, Chris Simpson, and Jeff Ely, they will officiate the second game. And we'll take a look here as the teams go through the handshake. Always glad to, to see the sportsmanship, Earl. Absolutely. And the exchange there. And Anthony, I believe, will be 
talking with Brad Sizemore. Coach Sizemore came up, sort of drew the thing out perfectly, <laughs> I tell you, because they were able to do exactly as he wanted in this second half. And Anthony is now with victorious coach Sizemore. Anthony, we'll send it down to you. 61 to win tonight over at East Ridge. Talk about what this win means for your program. Uh, with a young team like we got, anytime we can get one, especially early in the year, and, and bouncing back from a tough loss last night, I'm just really happy for the kids. We, you know, we had a, a bad first quarter and, and, and kind of settled down and played the next three. And our team's going to get better as we go. We got too much talent not to figure it out. We, we've got a lot of areas that we got to improve on. But uh, East Ridge was a, a really good team. We knew that coming in, and uh, they were physical and had some guys that could shoot the ball. So I was really proud of our kids for taking care of the ball stepping up and, and doing a better job on the defensive boards. Are you all in any big holiday tournaments over the Christmas break? Yeah, we're taking these guys Wednesday to Las Vegas, so that's going to be an interesting uh, six days for me. But hopefully we'll uh, go out there and, and get some wins. Coach, safe travels and congratulations on the win tonight. Okay, thank you.